my goodness, I'm right. looking at, you know, 5G infrastructure, pizza-sized transmitters every 250 feet in every city in this country. I mean, talk about that and the increase in radiation reaching the general population as we move forward with this new technology, 5G technology. Sure. Let's be careful. We're not necessarily moving forward with it. That, too, is buying into the industry's narrative here, that this is somehow a fait accompli, that it has to happen. 5G, 5, fifth generation technology is what that stands for, is critical to the uh, advent, potential advent, of the so-called Internet of Things, where your smartphone will be able to communicate with your smart uh, vehicle and your smart home, so that when you're leaving work, you can tell the uh, heater back in your home, get the heat started, so I'm going to be warm when I arrive, you can tell the oven to turn up the uh, stove so that we can cook dinner as soon as we arrive. When uh, Mark Dowie, my, my co-writer on this article, went to the industry conference, he took a picture, we have it in the Nation magazine, of a baby a doll, of a baby wearing a diaper, and right there at the crotch is a little transmitter, 5G transmitter, to tell mom or dad in the next room, oh, baby's diaper needs changing. That's what 5G is going to be. And the reason, as you mentioned, that it, in order to do it, they have to put these mini uh, transmitters every 250 feet along city streets or suburban neighborhoods is because the particular type of radiation that 5G uses does not travel as far. So you have to have many, many, probably millions of these pizza box sized little cell phone towers which will be put on street poles, utility poles, uh, telephone poles, sides of buildings. So when I look out my uh, uh, house in San Francisco, I see a utility pole that's about 20 feet from the bedroom window of my 13-year-old daughter. That's where those things are going to be. On the human epidemiology side, you have studies that show problems or potential problems and studies that are inconclusive. Now the industry spins the science and they put it out there for public consumption as though these studies are evidence of safety it is scientific fraud and that the core insight that they use is to create the appearance of scientific uncertainty to make it look like scientists disagree much more than they actually do there are studies that have been available for years that indicate and this is what's most disconcerting, that radio frequency radiation from cell phones can interact with living tissue. And when it interacts with living tissue, there are a variety of results that are produced. And many of these results, including some of the latest studies in Italy, as well as studies from mm -hmm. our own national toxicology program, yeah. indicate that one of those results is an increase in malignant tumor formation. People are being injured and harmed by the, the delay in, in having this information accessible to them. You must always use earbuds and minimize the use of a cell phone in general. There are these things called landline telephones that uh, I'm old enough to remember that was all we used to have. And somehow uh, civilization went on just fine. So uh, there's a number of things that you can do about this, but the first thing I think is to stop swallowing uh, what the uh, wireless industry has been telling us for 25 years, that everything is fine. Because of the, the tests that were released by the French government that found that when cell phones touch the body, they exceed the regulatory limits like such that our FCC has. There are cell phones being removed from the market in Europe. Following numerous scientific studies conducted over several decades, the FCC, the FDA, the World Health Organization, the American Cancer Society, and numerous other international and U.S. organizations and health experts continue to say that the scientific evidence shows no known health risk to humans due to the RF energy emitted by cell phones. The evidence includes analysis of official federal brain tumor statistics showing that since the introduction of cell phones in the 1980s, the mid-80s, the rate of brain tumors in the United States has decreased, end quote. Mark Hitzgarten, uh, your response to that? I very much wish that the Trade Association had accepted your invitation to come on to the program and actually have a discussion uh, as opposed to just issuing a statement. But I thank them for the statement because it's a, a very wonderful uh, recent illumination of exactly the kind of misleading approach they've been taking for 25 years now. This is how the disinformation campaign works, folks. 
go back and listen to that, and I'm sure it's going to be on the website here at On Point. Uh, there's a number of either outright falsehoods or misleading statements there. For example, he talks about how the federal uh, FDA and the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, and the WHO, the World Health Organization, have found no known risks. That is misleading to the point of false. The World Health Organization declared in 2011 that it looked at the uh, findings and said that, that uh, cell phone radiation is, quote, a possible human uh, carcinogen. The FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, although has the statutory authority for regulating the cell phone industry, has no scientists. It doesn't do scientific research. The FDA just asked, asked for a, a, a study by the National Institutes of Health, which the industry conveniently ignores. It just came out last week, peer-reviewed last week, I should say, down in North Carolina. And the peer-reviewed scientists looking at the National Toxicology Program study found, quote unquote, clear evidence, clear evidence that cell phone radiation causes cancer. So what the industry does is they dodge opportunities like this, invitations from a show like this to come on and actually talk about it, and then they issue a misleading statement like that that talks about how supposedly all these government agencies support their position. And I think that that, uh, <laughs> you folks can decide who you're going to believe, independent scientists or the companies that are making billions of dollars off your cell phones. Hi, Jane. I used to run our local education foundation in Ashland, and I personally brought in a lot of wireless technology. And then an electrical engineer friend of mine was reading a book called Zapped and mentioned that there could be biological effects from wireless technology. So I began to investigate. And beyond the cancer studies, which take decades to play out, in which time the industry has a lot of time to promote their products, there are there's a wealth of additional studies out there. What got me on my feet were the reproduction studies. They have taken male human sperm and exposed it to a laptop with the wireless antennas on, and it changed the DNA. It slowed the motility and caused far fewer sperm to become viable in just four hours. So uh, again, the, the Federal Communications Commission, which the industry on a show like this points out as, as being the protector of the public health, uh, when they uh, talk among themselves, they talk about, they praise the FCC for, quote, its light regulatory touch, unquote. And part of that is what the caller just referenced. You know, the, the SAR ratings, SAR ratings, which are measurements of, of the amount of radiation uh, that a cell phone is involved with, uh, you can't find them on the packaging. When you go into a store to buy a phone, you can't find it on the sales packaging. And that's part of what industry pressure did. And the only place you can find it is, as the caller just mentioned, deep, deep, deep in the finest of the fine print, either in your purchase agreement or five steps through the settings program to find out what it is. And by the way, the industry self-reports that information. The Federal Communications Commission lets the industry self-report that information rather than doing its own independent testing, which is why Norm Alster, who's with the Harvard Center, on ethics and journalism, did a report calling the FCC, quote, a captured agency, an agency that has been captured by the very industry it is supposed to regulate. And Thomas Wheeler, who we talked about earlier in the show, who ran the uh, Trade Association in the 1990s, is the perfect illustration. After he left the Trade Association, he went on to become the chairman of the Federal Communications Commission.